Until the 1650s, only a handful of African slaves lived in Virginia. But more and more Virginian planters concluded that black slaves were a better investment than unruly white servants. The African skin color made it difficult for them to escape into surrounding villages, and they did not succumb to epidemics as easily as Native American laborers did because they had developed resistance to European diseases in Africa. And it's really in the last two decades of the 17th century that slavery becomes the predominant labor system. As slavery became more and more popular, a system of laws called the slave codes was created to govern it. They begin to write laws saying that uh, the condition of slavery is permanent. Under the slave codes, Africans could never claim the protections of English common law, and their terms of service never expired. And according to a colonial law passed in 1662, the children of slave mothers would also be slaves, providing planters with a constant source of labor. The condition of a child follows the condition of the mother, and also presuming that a person of African descent will be a slave and that a slave will be a person of African descent. American slavery, once a temporary system of labor, soon became an institution of lifelong race-based bondage. The explosion of the transatlantic slave trade accelerated the shift from servitude to slavery. It quickly became a very crucial part of the economic system of the colonies and would later take a civil war to dismantle it. The slave trade became a huge business, and the English merchants got heavily involved in the slave trade toward the end of the 17th century. And so the supply of uh, enslaved people from Africa went up and was steady, was, was readily available. In 1680, there were only 4,500 black people in the Chesapeake region, a little over 5% of the regional population. 20 years later, nearly 30,000 African slaves lived in the English colonies. 